first. We have to work for people first. Now, none of us is quite sure why we can't do them all together, but this is something that might come up as a final argument, to which you might say, do you really think do you really think that workers in slaughterhouses, you know, when they're young and you say, what do you want to do when you grow up? Not likely. Nobody wants to work in a slaughterhouse. Right? Nobody wants to work really in any of the animal industries. They are known to be some of the cruelest, the biggest, ter- biggest uh, incidents of injury, the biggest turnover, the least protection. And these are people who are generally, uh, they're immigrants, they don't speak the language, they're poor, they need a job, right? Who, nobody goes and works in a slaughterhouse because they want to. So if you care about people, you should be eating something that maybe you wouldn't mind working to produce. So this is ecofeminism. This is the final moral theory that I'm going to bring to you today that we all use. But I would say it is the one that we use the least. Now, ecofeminism is the only one produced by women, and it was the idea that there's this overarching oppression, the system of oppression of hierarchy and dualism, so that uh, it, it affects all. You, you can't just work to protect animals. You actually have to work to protect. You have to work against speciesism, racism, sexism, heterosexism, ableism, ageism. They're all connected. But if we really want to be compassionate, if we really want to be good people... We have to move beyond any one focus. Now, that doesn't mean that as activists we have to join other movements. We don't have the time or the energy, but we at least need to call other people out when they say things that are racist. And we need to educate ourselves about heterosexism. We need to understand these other forms of oppression. And we need to open our doors because this is the one, this is the thing that I think philosophy can teach us. We're using it very effectively in our movement. But I think we need to now employ a little more ecofeminism so that we open our doors to differences and to let other people lead and to hear their voices. So this isn't just a, this isn't an animal whites. We want it to be a comprehensive movement. So in conclusion, um, I just think that if we all learn a little bit more about ethics, it actually would strengthen our movement. But I think we're doing really well. I think, as, as I can show you, you're all, you've heard it tonight. People have said the greatest good for the greatest number on more than one occasion up here and talking about the lives of animals and their right to life. We're using these things very effectively. The one thing I encourage us to do is to try to open our doors to these other isms and be a more inclusive and educated movement and work together with other groups. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for that, Lisa and Alex, and for doing my introduction for me, Alex. That saved me a little bit of breath. Uh, the, uh, our, this panel uh, can be dismissed back to where they were. Uh, thank you very much. And so we're, uh, yeah, please, one more round of applause for them, yes. <laughs> This is an unbelievable miracle. It is, we're on time. We're on time. We've got nine minutes to go before you all get out of here, and you're going to be out of here in less than five, I'm sure. Um, well, I had a feeling Lisa was going to close on an ecofeminism note. I hoped she would. Um, and uh, I, w- I was thinking before, or a couple hours ago before this panel, about that, about what we can learn from other movements. I, I have been, uh, I'm, I live in Baltimore right now, and I've been attending uh, a lot of the, uh, the Baltimore uprising events and the, you know, the issues on racial justice in Baltimore, and I've been doing some volunteering. Uh, if someone clapped, please don't. I don't deserve any applause for like, showing up somewhere once. Um, I've been doing some volunteering with an organization that works to, st- works to stop sexual assault in Baltimore, and I've been thinking a lot about what we can learn uh, from these other movements. And, uh, and I hope I've been taking some of these lessons in, but I actually, I, I noticed one thing on the flip side as well. I noticed one thing that a lot of social justice movements are doing uh, that our movement's been doing from day one. And, and what that is, is, is seeking allies who aren't directly benefiting from their cause. And, and so right now, you know, in the racial justice movement, uh, seeking white allies has been very important. And the feminism movement is seeking male feminist allies. Uh, the gay rights movement, LGBTQ movement, has been seeking straight allies. Seeking allies who don't directly benefit from the cause and who can therefore kind of be spokespeople to their own people, basically. You know, unfortunately, uh, a lot of men will listen to other men about, about certain feminist issues uh, better than they'll listen to women, which is horrible. But, you know, if that's how you get a bro to start, you know, to stop street harassing, you know, it might be what it has to be. And uh, one thing is uh, every one of us is an animal ally, right? A non-human animal ally. 
Uh, we're a whole movement made up of zero people who benefit, uh, really be who benefit directly from the work that they're doing. I mean, sure, our health's a little better because we're vegan or whatnot, but that's not why we're in this room. No one's here uh, because veganism makes them more healthy. Not a single one of us is primarily in this room for that reason. And I think that's something uh, really cool, a template that we have to offer other social justice movements. Now, when we do that, we need to go in, of course, doing their work for them as well. We can't just show up and say, hey, I've got an idea for you. Uh, you know, we, we have to legitimately be willing to hear their work that they need to do. Uh, but that's really something I think that no other movement can say. No other movement can say that 100% of its activists are there for someone other than themselves and their own people, basically. And, and so when we go out and to do the work, work that we're doing, uh, I think we can just remember the fact that we are literally over 1,000 people who are so compassionate that we're giving away a whole weekend just to learn how to advocate better for others. And so, uh, yeah. And while we do need to advocate for others and we do need to learn, we do need to do all this, uh, now it's network and food time. So uh, let's get some food and drinks and have some fun for a few hours, everyone. Thank you.